<clears throat> All right, guys, spur of the moment video here, but I had some good information in my head that I wanted to spit out to you guys. I'm gonna do it as fast as I can. So straight, simple, super simple to the point so you can understand it and start implementing it into your fitness regime, whatever it may be. So I assume if you clicked on this video, you're somebody who's trying to integrate running into their fitness program, whatever it is, while not losing any of the strength gains or their muscle mass that they've procured over you know, the, the amount of time that they've been trying to build that up. Well, I'm gonna tell you how I do it, how most hybrid athletes do it, if not all hybrid athletes do it, and how you should be doing it if you're trying to create that balance for yourself, okay? So anybody who's trying to integrate running into their routine and not trying to lose strength gains, period, whether you're running you know, one mile, two miles at a time, or if you're a long distance runner, or you're an aspiring long distance runner, but you don't wanna lose your strength gains, you need to understand how many calories you're taking in during the day versus how many calories you're burning during the day. Okay, so average numbers here, okay, across the board. The average person out there is going to burn around 125 calories per mile of running, okay? That's gonna be different if you're a smaller person, it's gonna be more around 100. If you're a larger person like myself, it's gonna be more around 150. Now, if you're somebody who has been strength training for some time and you've you know, gotten these gains and you don't wanna lose those gains with all the running you're doing, you need to make sure that you're replacing those calories throughout the day. You also need to make sure that before you go on your run, you prime yourself with the appropriate calories in order to sustain the energy that you're burning during that run. Because if you don't do that, your body will start burning past the fat reserves that it stores and start burning into the protein reserves that it has, into your muscle mass. So before you go on your runs, the best thing you can do is take in some quick carbs, okay? For me, myself, I usually take in a carb powder, okay, that consists of about 250 calories worth of just straight carbs per scoop. So depending on how far of a distance I'm planning on running, I do the math, I calculate the miles versus the calories that I'm gonna burn, and I take in at least half that much of carbs before I go on my run so I'm primed, ready to go. I have the energy that my body needs in order to sustain that run without burning into protein reserves, without burning my, my muscle mass. You can also do things like down a banana, take in like some honey, maybe like a honey stinger, something like that. But you need to be taking in carbs before you go on your run. Now, as soon as you're done with your run, you need to make sure you're taking in the appropriate amount of protein so that your body can start rebuilding itself after you've broken it down during that run. And it's okay to add some more carbs after that as well. Carbs are also building blocks as part of your body. People don't realize that they think carbs are bad. Carbs are not bad as long as you're burning them throughout the day. So that's the basic concept. Make sure that you understand that you're burning around 125 calories per mile that you run. Make sure that you prime yourself with the appropriate amount of calories that you that's gonna sustain you for the amount of running that you're gonna be doing during that session, and that you replace some calories with high protein foods, a protein shake, um, and then some extra carbs on the back end. Let's try to limit the fats throughout. You also need to make sure you're priming for gym work. You don't need to be taking in as many calories because you don't burn as many calories when you're at the gym as opposed to running. But you still need to make sure that you're primed before going to the gym, not just a pre-workout shake. Make sure you take like a scoop of honey or maybe a, maybe a banana or you know a scoop of a carb mix, something like that. Another good TTP to use is take your protein shake or at least like half your protein shake before you go to the gym so it's already in your system. Your body takes about anywhere upwards to about an hour to actually digest the protein depending on the kind of protein you're using. So you might as well prime your body with that protein, make it available to your system as you're breaking it down and it, the repair process can begin immediately and then supplement with another scoop on the back end of your gym work. Now, with all that being said, it's also really important that you keep track or at least semi keep track of how many calories you're burning during the day and put it up against how many calories it takes to sustain you as a person. Now, the average fit person is gonna take anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 calories to sustain them, you know, keep the mass that they have, keep the current build that they have every day. If you're running long distance and you know, you're, you're running like 10 miles at a time, well, that 10 miles equates to over a thousand calories. So you're gonna have to replace those calories with good foods and proper macronutrients in order to maintain what you've already built up, maintain yourself without losing any weight. So when it's all said and done, and at the end of the day, you need to be adding how many calories you've burned throughout the day, give or take, plus the amount of calories it takes to sustain yourself. And the product of that is how many calories you need just to sustain yourself every day. And for a hybrid athlete, somebody who runs a lot and does strength training a lot, it's really important that you get that calculation as correct as possible. Otherwise, you're gonna be wasting your time. 
you are gonna start losing the gains or you won't be building the gains that you're looking for. And you're gonna be hitting that feeling of overtraining much more frequently if you're not hitting those calorie goals. So that's it guys, just wanted to hit you up with that real quick while it was on my mind. I hope that was as clear and as simple as possible for you guys. I wanted to keep it short. I actually need to keep it short because the sun's about to go down and I gotta finish my run. So if you have any of your own TTPs that you'd like to follow or any ideas, suggestions, or even any questions, please drop that in the comments for everybody. The more information we have, the better. Besides that, the sun's about to go down and I still got a few miles back to the house. I will see you on the next one.